Hey everyone, it's Ivan from kitbadger.com. Out here to share with you my experience with the Amtac Shooting 3-Day Night Vision course in October 2021. Some of you are like, Ivan, didn't you already take that course about a year ago? I did, twofold though. One, it basically is coming full circle. With respect to my series on night vision, I took that course initially about a year ago and it was the first of a number of night vision courses I took, basically scaling gear and capability. So the ability to come full circle now with this last time, initially starting with like bare bones, entry level equipment, this time pretty much kind of best of the best, which was nice being able to come full circle and take that course again. Secondly, I guess secondly, two fingers, here's the thing. Unlike some courses, it's an amazing course that you can take more than once in that just getting good reps. And to that end, going back to crawl, walk, run, started day one working pistol. Getting through those fundamentals, initially starting with circle of awareness and yeah, putting some rounds through. On paper, up fairly close, just working on slow aim fire and refining both sight picture as well as getting those good hits. And working on all those fundamentals, working grip as well as good aggressive fighting stance. And with that, basically breaking down those components. So breaking some shots, breaking your grip, breaking your stance, getting back into it and getting more good hits. Okay, then I'm gonna go straight finger, I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna break my stance, break my grip, reattack this, bring it back to here because I need to be able to build my grip in between this. And I come back up and let's work that position of finger on. From there, went into draw stroke. Safely and efficiently drawing your pistol out so you can engage the target. Also something that's important if you're doing it with intention rather than just like as a range dance, scans. Yes, it can get kind of tedious on like the flat range, but if you do it with intentionality, it can be very important to kind of build that in. Bill also went over kind of some key points with respect to activation, whether it's light or laser, but yeah essentially some points of performance. I, I will say that there's the, the thing to be aware of if you're gonna actuate it with your trigger finger is over tasking your trigger finger, right? If you're telling your trigger finger, sometimes it turns lights on and off and sometimes it pulls the trigger. Sometimes the wires can get crossed there. I watched a dude. And since all problems aren't necessarily solved at like seven yards, Went back to the 25 for some slow aim fire and just work on kind of refining all that stuff. Then the antithesis of slow aim fire, moving all the way up to the targets and working some retention stuff. Bill usually works that retention pistol stuff in his integrative combatives, things like that. But if you're carrying a gun, sometimes problems happen closer than you'd like. So it's pretty cool. Get some reps on that during the day. And eventually daylight hours were over. So we ended up breaking for dinner basically. And basically went through a whole talk on night vision setup. So with respect to whether you have a bump helmet or some sort of skull crusher, hopefully not, ballistic helmet, and basically different ways to have things set up and adjust them so that they work for you. And then after that, time to go back out there under hours of darkness. It's really great being able to work on a lot of the same stuff we had done during the day to include things that are simple during the day, like circle of awareness, how to properly load, make ready your pistol, 
and then yeah get into it and also something that was emphasized was maintaining an accuracy standard so we know you're capable of shooting like this two inch dot at however many yards during the day no reason you shouldn't be able to shoot it at night so continue working through to include getting some shots again stretching out that distance at about 25 yards largely shooting passive And then reinforcing those things we'd work during the day, working, drawing that pistol out under knots. And finally, getting into some multi-target engagements. And lastly, that first night kind of culminating in some moving and shooting. Wall well, day one was dedicated to pistol. Day two, dedicated to rifle. So got started initially back at 50 yards, getting good, solid, confirmed zero. And then from there, we could move on. Confident in our zeros, moved up close and began working mechanical offset. And then getting some reps with up drills, working both strike ready position as well as low ready and kind of feeling them both out and recognizing time situation where both of them have a place kind of a continuation from the previous day again working on grip and that good aggressive fighting stance bill also went over touch point shots again kind of time and opportunity the place for them and how to perform them Basically being able to get really good, effective shots from a touch point very quickly. Now we're gonna do it from a low ready position. From a standard low ready, and I go safety touch point, slack, and shot, and shot, and do that safety. And anyone else need it? No. Back down to low ready. We also got to work through some combat reloads. Magazine goes dry when you don't want it to go dry because you did not tack reload and getting that gun back up. And at one point, because of some bad ammo, ended up with a popped primer. My gun basically went down. Not what I was hoping for, but I got it fixed. And before we ended up switching to those hours of darkness, got into some shoulder transitions. Day two, when we broke for lunch, or dinner, I guess it was, as it transitioned into nighttime. That was basically where Bill went over kind of his lecture portion on both gun setup as well as gear setup. So with respect to plate carriers, armor, things along those lines, or even just whatever it may be, chest rig, something like that. And then also long gun. So what kind of basically set up in a way that works and well there are most certainly best practices at the end of the day you dance with who you showed up with so people are going to run whatever they had regardless but basically some best practices as far as how to get that stuff set up first thing we did under those hours of darkness was some shooting at the 50 yard line basically shooting passive through our guns and really telling and great 
exercise, kind of trying to figure out what works. So depending on your optic, your flexibility, all these things, like could you get down and shoot from the prone or did you have to kind of do like a modified rollover prone? For me personally, shooting the low power variable, that night force attacker, to shoot passive, I needed to basically kind of be sitting back there to get behind it, for me personally, just because of flexibility and stuff like that. But after we shot passive for a bit, it was time to move forward. Once up close, continue to shoot passive. And again, working that same accuracy standard we had basically established during the day. And eventually we moved into active shooting with lasers, so emitting energy. And with that, again, going back like mechanical offset and stuff, having to basically work that same offset shooting our lasers. That wrapped up day two, went home, got some rest, ready to come back for that third and final day. Day three, culmination of all the things. And it was raining, a nice little training modifier but basically started the day working some presentations. Again, going back to those things we had shot before as far as high ready, low ready, as well as some pistol presentations. and throwing in a couple shoulder switches. Additionally, being able to kind of work through different sighting systems, whether it is low power variable, or my offset RMR, or even activating that laser, the E Myers Mall. And since we had both our guns, our primary and our secondary, getting into those transitions. And one of the very best ways to work those transitions, crazy Indian drill. Lots of reps, basically rifle PT. Rifle, pistol, rifle, pistol, so on and so forth. And lastly, one of the things we worked on that day was barricade protocols. Again, time and place, where to employ it, and then how to properly execute it. So working around a barricade where there's a perceived threat, exposing the least amount of your body as possible, and still being able to make those shots. And lastly, before we lost the light, a little bit of pistol run and gun. Really amazing range property out there to where it's not just like a static flat range. Well, there is that. There's also basically all kinds of steel hidden throughout the forest. And yeah, gotta search for those targets. That last night, as we had dinner, transition to darkness, Bill went over his mindset talk. Amazing talk that he pretty much incorporates into all of his courses. Really, really good. And from there, once it was dark, we went back out and kind of explored some of the limitations of night vision. It's not magic, there are limitations. So depending on your target, how far it is, like. Can you see it at night? And then with that, where does thermal come in? To include thermal overlay, something like a Cody. 
which is pretty game changing. Then time to do some more shooting. We got to do again that pistol run and gun, but this time at night using kind of whatever we had. So if you could shoot passive, which you probably couldn't because it's like dark timber. So how do you need to illuminate your target and make it work? Hey Bill, I'm, gonna, I'm running my vampire off my helmet. Roger. Ready to go? Ready. Got it. Finally culminating in some rifle run and gun. Again, searching out those targets deep in the timber and trying to find them so you can get those good hits. And that right there wraps up the Amtac shooting three-day night vision course. There's some things I definitely really appreciate about it. One, just the structure of day portion and a night portion. So you can work through and get familiar, get some reps during the day, and then when you throw your night vision on, everything comes down to like a 40 degree field of view. You can work those same things. And basically you already you already have some meaningful reps on it, so you're not just kind of thrown to the wolves. And being able to also maintain those same accuracy standards, which I think is really important. The other cool thing, having taken it twice now, is you do a lot of shooting, which some night vision courses, you might do more shooting or less shooting, but it's one of those where you could come back and like repeat a fender, like take the class over and over again, because Maybe you don't have access, like limitations to places where you can shoot at night. And honestly, being able to shoot on that range, especially like the run and gun stuff, incredibly valuable. Being able to, yeah, have to seek out targets, really, really cool. Overall, amazing course. And on that spectrum, is it a beginner course? Is it an expert course? Pretty much right there in the middle. Like you could come there as long as you have a fundamental baseline kind of level of safely handling weapons because once you throw those nods on like you need to be able to be safe like always manipulate your safety like muzzle awareness all that stuff paramount but yeah definitely not set up necessarily as like this introductory class and on the far end of like whatever expert means no, like you can go there and get meaningful reps shooting during the day and at night under nods. So incredibly valuable across the board, I think. But if you're looking for a night vision course, check it out. He does usually one or two every, I guess, kind of fall usually. But um, yeah, you can go check out Amtac Shooting, see their whole course schedule, whether it's this or other ones. And if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it. Whether it's liking and sharing videos or going over to kitbadger.com, pick up KBAT target pads, stickers, whatever it may be, or support me directly through Patreon. All that stuff helps me go out, create more content for you. And over on Patreon, you usually get early access to videos and we have active Discord. 
you have questions for myself, I'm happy to answer them over there on our Patreon, probably not down in the comments section. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.